Welcome to Charleston Parents Connect. I am Danica Todd, your certified doula, licensed massage therapist, and certified yoga and Pilates instructor. It is my intention through sharing content and creating community to transform your relationships, inspire connection, and lead communities to live unapologetically. Just as you may have been surprised by my introduction to natural inductions, I'm going to ask you to hold on until the end of this video so that you can better define and articulate your birth plan and needs when it comes to medical interventions. See, it isn't my job as your community facilitator or your doula to lean you in a specific direction in your birth plan, nor is it ethical to only share the content or information that aligns with my family values. What I do hope is to empower you to research your options fully and use the right language when you convey your desires to your support team. This video can apply to any medical situation, but for ease of understanding, I'm going to stick with labor and delivery today. Why? Well, because if you're in this community, you are either going to give birth or have given birth in the past. In honor of your time, we're gonna do a quick overview of four intervention definitions. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Since we are talking medical today, I will stick to the scope as examples, but just remember that these terms apply to any alternative, complementary, or natural interventions as well. So first up is elected. This one is pretty self-explanatory. This is when a family elects to have an intervention on their own. This could look like a scheduled induction to get their preferred doctor, work around schedules or when family can come into town, it could also be planning to get medical pain relief from an epidural. This is the family electing for an intervention without a medical reason. Then there is routine. This is when an intervention is routine without being medically necessary. An example would be not allowing the laboring mother to eat while in labor. I heard a doctor recently tell my client that there was no medical evidence to support not eating while in labor. He just didn't want to be blamed if she threw it up later. Another example would be having a low risk mom and baby on a non-stress test monitor for their full labor support in a hospital. Next is compassionate use of an intervention. So this is when you don't start out planning for an intervention and it isn't medically necessary, but is a tool to support you in labor. This often looks like a planned natural delivery that's gone on for a while and the parents haven't slept and mom may not have the energy to push her baby out. So we might have a discussion about how they want to proceed. They can elect to keep the course and if they get too tired, um, they might end up giving birth by cesarean, or they can elect to get an epidural so that they can sleep for a couple hours and have the energy to vaginally deliver their baby. There isn't a wrong answer. There's only the compassionate use of an intervention available if the family, if you decide that you want to use it. Finally, we have medical. So medically necessary interventions are when you or your baby is no longer in homeostasis. So that is just a simple big word that means something somewhere is not balanced anymore and it has become medically necessary to intervene in your care. This could be as simple as taking an antacid all the way to some more advanced imbalances like preeclampsia. Medically necessary interventions are when you've crossed over from elected, routine, or compassionate into, we need to keep you and your baby safe now. Sometimes it's very obvious when you've crossed the line, but other times it can be subtle. Having your options taken away for a medical reason 
can leave you feeling like, well, you have no options and you always have an option. You may not like your choices, but sometimes it really does come down to keeping you and your baby alive or risk losing your or your baby's life. It doesn't mean that you're not allowed to grieve the loss of your birth plan. It just means that you have to process the loss of your ideal birth plan while also celebrating the things that went well and the life of your child at the same time. I hope this video brought some clarity to the definitions and language used when communicating your wishes both before labor begins and then dialoguing effectively with your team during your birth. If you have not watched the video on natural inductions, I would highly recommend doing that now. Well, honestly, because there really isn't such a thing as a natural induction. To be natural would mean to not mess with nature and wait to spontaneously go into labor. So check out some more definitions over there. Don't forget to subscribe to my free resources by joining my email list and to hop on over to Facebook and join the Charleston Parents Connect group and stay connected with other awesome parents just like you.